Ha ha, you a poopy head. Ha ha, poopy head. Ha ha, you a poopy head. You a poopy head. Oh yeah? Well, I didn't put any money in the envelope this time when I saw your mom. What do you mean? I just put it on the dresser, stacked it full of coupons. She just assumed. Oh yeah. Stop being weird, stupid head. Stop being weird, stupid head. Your mother's the stupid head. But hey, she was as good as usual. Welcome to the Ben Ben Show. Yeah, that's how you deal with kids who are unruly. You don't say, hey, Billy, those aren't the right words. What did we tell you? You say, hey, Billy, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry your mom's just too dumb to realize I didn't pay her last time. I don't know what that means for you in terms of your genetics, but wish you the best of luck, buddy. Yeah, so you do, because they're in your face and they're obnoxious. They don't care about anyone but themselves. They're so selfish. So you give them a taste of their own medicine. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with adult problems. Like, I don't know, being in Austin, Texas, for example, last week. Are you kidding me? Ugh! I mean, people died, not because of the storm, because of the response to the storm. I was without food, water, sustenance for six days. No shower, no nothing, no roads plowed. I'm not complaining about myself, I'm just saying, I witnessed it, I was here, experienced it, yes, awful. No snow plows. That's an adult problem. I mean, that's, that's like a real problem when you're a governor, Governor Abbott or Stephen Adler, the idiot who told people, hey, Austinites, make sure you wear your mask and stay at home. By the way, Cabo is fantastic right now, but you stay at home. Uh, so is, it, is my private jet ready? No? Come on, speed it up. Unacceptable, really, really vile. That guy should be fired. That specific person, Stephen Adler, should be Fire. Governor Abbott really hard in terms of the politics and the Republican protection of just like image issues. He might be like, you know, mafioso partnered in, you know, he's a made man, can't get rid of him. But Stephen Adler, fire him. Let's fire Stephen Adler. Let's get that done. Um, I was in Austin um, helping families, east, north, and south. I was primarily myself in East Austin, started a GoFundMe campaign to help families who had no heat, no water, no transportation. And even if they did, they probably wouldn't really get their cars out because the the roads weren't plowed. Basic PP and E for like a city. I don't care if you're in Mexico. Like the odds of snowing are like one in, I don't know, some places in Mexico actually do snow, but not like, like below, the, not in the mountains, just like somewhere like, I don't know, like in Cancun, the odds of snow, right? Still get some snow plows. And, um, you know, we, we distributed blankets and space heaters and all this stuff. And we really helped people. Uh, St. David's Hospital in Round Rock had yeah, because there's no water. They turned off the water, not because of the storm. This is all in response. They were worried about the power grid possibly losing you know, uh, power for months, so they turned everything off just in case because of the deep freeze. So I'm talking about like, in general, it was like two inches of snow in 40 degree weather, but it drops at night and it's very uncomfortable if you don't have any heat, and the city couldn't handle that. That's re people should be fired, um, and, and families um, should sue, and I hope that they do. I really do. Sue, it's good, it's an American way. Um, Texas is all about that, guns and freedom. Sue, that's another thing. Most people sue like patent trolls and stuff from Houston, that's so just it's a Texas thing. Sue, 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 sue. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, I don't know. Um, this episode of the Bin Bin Show is brought to you by bacon. Other than last week when I wasn't eating, uh, I really had a hard time dealing with uh, energy issues. I was worried about like make, staying lean. I have a six pack here. I know, I know, I know. Oh, hey, I take care of myself. And I know about dietary, you know, restrictions and like how to like maintain like eating voluminous food so you feel full. I, I know all about this, but sometimes you forget. Fat's a basic thing and bacon is so good. When I took a ketogenic diet to its ultimate like length of losing like 80 pounds in three months, literally I did. It was like 260, it went down to like 180. Um, three months, all fat, all high protein, no sugar. But you can't live like that for very long. And you, get, you, you then get back to normal and then you decide to go on something else. It, it's, it's like addictive. Eat bacon, bacon's lovely. If you're a Muslim, you know, just try it. It's so what, come on, so what? No big deal, so what, who cares? Just try it. Come on.
It was a big deal. Let's try. It's funny. Um, it's at this, here's a video. Vladimir Putin's uh, minister of trade had no idea that um, Indonesia is Muslim. And so he's like, we're, have, we're a major pork exporter, but our numbers in Indonesia are way down. This is unacceptable. I, I have a plan that I've spent months on to make sure that Indonesia starts buying our pork. And you see, you see Putin like just like, and he's not really, he's not showing he's upset. I mean, incompetence is not really a good thing in government. Austin. But, you know, it's like, he's just like, this is before everyone's like showboating, the cameras are rolling. He's like, this idiot is talking about how much work he's done. He doesn't know a basic thing about the demographics of a gigantic country in terms of exports and their religion and why they may not buy a certain thing. And he, he says, like, he, because he explains to the guy, hey, you know, they're Muslim, right? And he's like, yes, I, of course, but we're trying to convert them. Oh, that's part of the plan. I didn't know that was part of the general trade commission of like commodities. Okay, thank you. This is so funny. I love that one. I love that one. He's a funny guy. He's, he does all these like, like he's, tick, he's a TikTok guy. Putin's a TikTok guy. I mean, that's weird. Trump should be something. I'm shocked he doesn't start his own app. We're going to talk about that later. But um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, man. Another um, thing I want to mention. Uh, I love this new product by Coca-Cola. Uh, pay me Coca-Cola. I love your product. Coke's coffee. It takes that edge off of the extreme of like drinking soda. You have like four Cokes and it kind of mostly like, if you, if you ate a Dorito with your Coke and it cut your mouth, you know, you just start chomping and not chewing. You're like, love Dorito, it's so good. And then you drink Coke and it like stings like your gums. Like, they, okay, I've had too many sodas. You're kind of self-aware. It has a stinging sensation, Coke. Not a bad thing. It's just kind of limits you. The coffee nullifies that like extreme, like feeling of bubbles and intensity. Um, it's lovely. I don't know how much like caffeine's in this sucker, but because it's not like an energy drink where they tell you it's like, you know, like, like a performance thing. It's just like, there's coffee. Oh, 69 milligrams. So really you'd like 10 of these to get like you know, five to get like something that's in like this, for example, a red line or a, um, this, a, a, a C4. So in terms of efficacy, I, I don't know. In terms of taste, lovely, love it. Um, taste, I like to have pancakes in the morning. I'm sure you do too. Wouldn't you like to have your pancakes with exclusive limited edition Aunt Jemima that they don't make anymore? Signed by moi. Go to my Patreon, sign up for my monthly, and I will personally mention you on the show I will do a video bit in your honor, a comedy bit, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you a signed version of this. And I, I guarantee you, these things will be worth money. And not a joke. I really believe hedge funds are stocking off. I'm just kidding. But these will be worth money at some point. And a signed bin bin version? Come on. And if you think that my signature will actually be worth less in the future as this show grows, then I'll sign on a piece of paper and include it and you can just have the individual on Jemima. I bought tons of these. Tons of them. See? So, there we are. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that. Takes care of that. Takes care of that. Uh, oh, yeah. This thought I had the other day is like, what if Val Kilmer, he's the new Top Gun's coming out, he uh, has a cameo in it, and you know, he has throat cancer. God bless him. But what if it was Alzheimer's and not throat cancer? And what if he started calling his children Nigger Jim? because of his Mark Twain thing he's been doing for 20 years on stage. I know it sounds awful. I probably shouldn't even say that word, but if I say N-word jam, it's retarded, so I had to say it. Oh, I can't say that either. Fuck. Um, oh shit. I'm not here. I can't hide. I screwed up. Okay, whatever. Fine. No, but like that, you know, actually I don't believe in these fake censorship. That's the whole point. We're gonna talk about censorship too today, because like, you know, I haven't been on been before, haven't been in front of the camera for a little while other than like my small little videos. I've been been um, clips, which is you should go to follow on YouTube and clips. It's my other channel. Also, I'm on TikTok, uh, Instagram, you know, lovely good times. Um, well, let's get into the nitty gritty. Governor Cuomo lying about death rates in nursing homes when he demanded that nursing homes accept patients with COVID so that hospital beds would be open. Some 9,000 patients, um, which then inflated death toll numbers overall at uh, nursing homes by conflating 
basic nursing home deaths with COVID deaths. And his reason for saying why he's underreported those deaths after the fact is, I don't want to double count. Of course, no one else in the entire United States says we don't want to count. We're going to underreport the deaths at nursing homes based on COVID because we don't want someone in aggregate to double count. We don't make an assumption that people are bad at math that do our numbers. Um, but that's what Governor Cuomo has apparently done. He's like, hey, this is why I did it. Come on, guys. There's no fraud here. Uh, and then this follows with an allegation by Lindsay Boylan. What's her name? Attractive. Good. Yes. According to him, she's a better looking version of someone's sister in his office. Whatever that means. Accused him of kissing her in 2018. 2018, as you remember, is the height of the Me Too movement, which makes me wonder, why would you risk doing anything wrong in 2018? I, I like... I don't know. I just pretend I didn't have a dick in 2018. I'm pretty sure I locked it away or lock and key. Uh, just kidding. No, but like, it's weird. To his credit though, I do think it's weird that like, whenever something bad happens, something completely separate or it just starts snowballing against your favor, like uh, a Marilyn Manson, just like boom, girl after girl after girl after girl after one comes out. It's very strange. It's like, why? Are, where were you a month ago? Why is it always coordinated? The Me Too movement has always been this way. It's like, there's no way we can just go after these big powerful men unless we have a group together. It's like some lawyer in the background is like just signing clients and just waiting. Kind of like the feds when you drug traffic, they don't get you like after the second or third drug trafficking charge or uh, uh, event, they want you to do it for years and years. Statute of Limitations Conspiracy is 13. Don't ask me why I know that. But uh, it's just, it's, it's just odd that, you know, you're accused of fraud, your party is starting to turn against you, the mainstream media, NBC, C CNN, definitely starting to do that. J uh, J uh, Jake Tapper wants to interview him, he doesn't want to do it. It's usually a friendly, but it sounds like it's not. It sounds like he's up against it. And then this woman comes out and says, he kissed me when I worked for him. Which is kind of a weird thing. It's like, I've kissed women, maybe they didn't like it. I don't know, it's never happened to me, but why would it? But um, yeah, it's just like, it's that rape or assault, he took a shot. I feel like the guy's getting, getting crushed right now. Don't like him. And he's like, you know, unarticulate, uh, inarticulate, say unarticulate, okay, inarticulate. Um, very just kind of crass. He's destroyed businesses. He's destroyed New York City. Um, you know, if, if, like, business have been open since the 20s, earlier than that. Lost everything. He's like, hey, you know what would be a great idea? What if we get all these businesses that failed under my watch intentionally to destroy them uh, and then we'll convert them into affordable housing and we'll get these people that now have to work at McDonald's and serve food for a living. We'll just take the money out of their taxes to pay for it. Yeah, brilliant. Ugh, this guy's gross, man. And he's like, rich people, come back. Come on. I'm like, you're, you're vile. Absolutely vile. But um, yeah, um, I don't know. Men in general just like, I, 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 the Me Too movement is tough. I know this is kind of going kind of off on a tangent, but like, yeah, men are selfish, horny, and but like they're not. You know, it's like taking like ideas of being a man and like the way we view women in terms of commodities. Like, just sometimes oh, she's just a beautiful woman. Yeah, but what about her personality? I'm like, yeah, in that picture she posted online, she's literally looking a lollipop in a bikini on purpose to emphasize the sexuality of the phallus nature and, and dichotomy of this like, you know, or whatever, the personifying of Kali Pop as a phallus. And we're supposed to be like, that, that's just her art form. She can express herself. You don't have to go there with your words and your thinking. I'm like, okay, geez. What if men really only have revealed themselves during sex? Like women just had to take a chance. Like he's so, God, you're so nice. Girls, he just, he's volunteers at animal shelter every single day of the week. Oh, he loves dogs. He loves my little dog, Trippy. And then she just like, I think tonight's gonna be the night. I think I really think it is. Oh my God. And then like, we finally reveal ourselves during sex. Women just have to take that chance. And you know, he's just like, I hate dogs. Oh, oh, your mother's ugly. Sorry, it's possible. Um, next topic, let's, let's roll it. 
rolled on down. Um, but yeah, I missed out on Bitcoin. That sucked. Next topic. No. Five. I did do five Bitcoin wallets. Five Bitcoin wallets. I looked at them. And I'm just like, yeah. it was confusing back in 2014. What's a blockchain? I didn't understand it. It was very weird. Like, I, so do I pay my credit card? Well, you set up this account. Here's your phrase key. And then here's your PGP. Here's your public. Ad- I'm like, okay, dude, what are you talking about, man? I just want to buy this shit. It looks interesting. Well, and here's your, uh, your social security number we need. And you're right. I'm like, what am I buying here? And it's just like, oh. lo and behold, I do have a transaction. That's a, I somehow bought Bitcoin in 2016 or 15. And there's, the, the discrepancy is $19 difference. It's stayed in a Coinbase wallet. But it's over $1,000 now. This is the difference that, you know, Coinbase, like, I don't know. They, they shut the account down to let me access it. So I could, at the time, couldn't buy anymore. Coinbase was going through some weird thing. I just ignored it. I just kind of the way you invest, you just kind of like put something in there and don't touch it. And then boom, there it is. Match it was $5,000. Oh, don't even get me going. Um, Bobby Schmurda, um, he's out of jail. Bobby bitch, yeah, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby bitch. Uh-huh, yeah. That's, Jay. I don't know, Bobby. But I like Bobby Schmurda. Um, Martin Shrelly, my friend, um, pen pal, he, uh, he tried to b- 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 bail him out. Bobby did not rat. He did not. Um, he did not take any. Um, didn't you know? Didn't didn't cooperate. Good for him. Stay strong. Um, it's great. It's under a lot of pressure to to do that. Kind of like six nine. Definitely ratted out on people. I don't know how he's still alive. I fe- I, I I guess it's just like the fact that he's a celebrity. But I feel like there's a bullet waiting for six nine. The guy totally. Mm, it's not not OG. Not OG. Not good. Uh, a gender revealed device explodes, killing a man in New York. The explosion in a garage killed Christopher Pinckney and injured his brother on Sunday. Um, officials described it as one of the freakiest accidents of all time. As it turns out, it's a boy. So, <sighs> mixed feelings about that one. Um, that's, that's awkward. Uh, El Chapo's wife. Uh, is or has been arrested in Virginia for drug trafficking. Um, you remember El Chapo, the head of the uh, Sonola drug cartel. It was a uh, uh, escape from Mexican prison in 2015, according to the indictment, help with help from her. I don't know how accurate this is. I wouldn't if I if I was anywhere associated with my husband's business, I wouldn't be parading around the United States. She has dual citizenship, but still, uh, this maybe this is like loosey goosey. I don't know. Um, her name is. Emma Coronel Aspiro, she's a 31-year-old former beauty queen, arrested at Dulles Airport. Um, yeah. Her arrest in the latest twist involves, uh, yeah, just, she basically just charging with all the stuff they charged her husband with. I don't know. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, it sucks, I guess. It's weird. Maybe she they're just doing it to get to someone else in the Snowy Garter Cartel that she knows. Like, I don't know, man. I feel like... El Chapo in his plea would have done something to protect his family, like you, like make it so that they're not prosecutable. Like I, I don't know, he's a, I'm sure was very much aware that his wife and his kids had ties to the United States and didn't want them to be used as leverage against his former organization. Or his crime, I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's disconcerting um, to say the least. Uh, the, the federal government will do things like this and put leverage on people without hesitation. Um, and it seems like they were biding time. And maybe this is just seeing an uptick through the Drug Enforcement Task Force in Sonola activity and they want to use her to go after people. But again, they're using a person that might or not be innocent. She might be fully aware where the money came from but not involved. Does that make her complicit? It's kind of like a Tony Soprano's wife issue. Like, I'm aware where my husband's money comes from. I don't kill anyone. I know he does. Am I guilty? I don't know. Kind of taking blood money. Is that, is, that, is that crime? Well, I guess you're perpetuating the cycles. Like the, the idea of like, if you're an addict and you buy drugs, are you also complicit? Yeah, I guess. I guess, I guess that's the one legitimate reason of prosecuting an, an addict is they have a problem, but they are contributing. Without the supply, you have nothing. Without the demand, you have nothing. It's just point, reality, I don't know. Um, is the reason Donald Trump, who's now trying to on Facebook, begging, please take me back, please take me back, come on, put me back on, unban me, 
is the reason he's doing this, not setting up a parlor, a mines, or a, um, a Gab account, because he's trying to build his own social media network and it's just not up yet or ready. I, I don't understand why the guy is actually complaining that he's not, you know, uh, I've been censored and I really want to go on Facebook on these major market share applications, but he hasn't tried to build his own at all. He hasn't tried to go on Parler or, or the others. I, it's so confusing. And the only thing I can think of, there's two. He's building his own thing that's not ready yet and he's delaying it. Or he's setting up a scenario where he does get back on and he intentionally gets kicked off. He kicks himself off by, by forcing them to ban him again. And something that's not necessarily fair, but he, he, he like studies those guidelines and does something kind of like uh, ambiguous, but in violation, so they ban him. And he takes all the, all the uproar of that and uses that to launch his, um, launch his network. The other scenario which follows along with why he might, this might not be the case is he's afraid that he'll fail. That if he goes to Parler, it doesn't change how many viewers they have. Or big tech has a reason to say, look at this guy. He's a failure now. He's, he's lost the election. Now people are, you know, the uh, parlor hasn't improved. Mines, Gab, you got all these accounts. The, the viewership's not up. User growth is, is stagnant. He's a failure. You know, don't bother. He's Trump's old news. And, and that's, that's the only fear. Because like, it's, it's something he doesn't understand. He deferred to Kushner back in 2016 saying, hey, should I join Parler? Should I do that? And they said, no, stay on Twitter and the main things. And I think he doesn't understand the business. He doesn't understand the um, the the potential of, or rather, he's aware of the consequence to his image that his poll is not as big as it used to be because he lost the election. I will say after the fact, if he had won the election, said I'm going on Parlor, maybe he'd feel way more comfortable about it. Just in terms of like his account with uh, Twitter was so huge, helped Twitter's uh, daily average user numbers. Uh, apps, 100%. He, he, like, Twitter was struggling. And tw he might, in, inadvertently, the one anathema to liberal progressive values in Silicon Valley might actually have perpetuated and propelled Twitter in terms of market share into a stratosphere, um, like doubling in price. I think it was a 20, 19, 18. Now it's, it's like 40, 45. Just a thought. I've always been a fan. I've, I've always believed. I've done the, this kind of cash flow analysis and looking at the DAUs. It seems like I think some of those numbers are fake. So the revenue numbers are going down per user, which means that some of those are either diluted or they're not monetizing them. But the amount of them, the amount of revenue that seems to start to just stagnate and go down in the recent quarters, suggests that they're using bots and counting them. Now they have to be monetizable users it's according to their work, but I, I think that they might be fudging these numbers a little bit. Um, when you have no oversight or people have any like concept in terms of federal oversight of like, hey, how do you define this or is this real? How do you know? They only know from their own systems. They're only gauging who's real and who's not by their, I don't know, their, their own interpretation, at least as, as, at face value. They might have more sophisticated algorithms to determine who's a real person, who's a real user, who's, a re who's not, but you don't know. And so... They can trick everyone into thinking, oh, here's the trending topics that people are clicking on. Well, actually, they're creating the trending topics, like Operation Mockingbird. They're picking the subject matters for people to uh, find popular, and they're pushing them on to push an agenda. Maybe they're even selling that. So, blooming, imagine if they have like Bitcoin accounts in other countries. They have Goldman Sachs or different people pushing, what do you want to be trending? And they have auctions. And so they just pick a topic, and they're like, okay. Bidding starts at $1 million and then it goes up, to, or maybe it goes higher than that, $20 million, like Super Bowl commercials. And we can have you pick topics and curated content towards your own ends and bid them into the trending. And we can even do it in jurisdictional areas. Like you can take Florida for today and bid and change those topics for West Palm Beach, Florida. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, it could be that complex and manipulative. And there's really no way to determine whether that's fabricated and, and, and is it even illegal? The auction idea seems ridiculous. The fact that it's not transparent, it seems like a major violation in terms of shareholder uh, uh, rights and like uh, transparency. But can you prove it? Like what's the difference between Ivan Boski and John Mueller and the you know, Raiders um, from the 80s? They had a deal where both Boski thought that T. Boone Pickens was gonna buy city services and a um, leveraged buyout. And Ivan Boski borrowed, I think, 90% of the total value of his firm to 
buy City Services stock. And it turned out not to be true. And the markets had closed, but the Asian markets were open, trading the same security or a derivation thereof. Um, so from something like an ADR receipt in the United States. And so he was stuck, losing money, didn't know what to do. So he took on John Malloran with the help of a, um, or the approval of an SEC uh, official saying, let's, I, I borrowed all this money, I'm losing money, I'm gonna become insolvent because I can't pay back these loans. The threshold's about $30 a share, what can I do? So John Malloran agreed to, in terms of options to take all this leverage away from Ivan so he remained solvent. He, I think he ended up losing like 30% of his value of his entire firm, like $25 million. And then um, John, uh, as a you know, kind of deal, got 50% of all profits at, because when the stock dropped to 30, it became valuable. So John Muller and the options guy from uh, Spear Leads then had the op opportunity to take the uptick in the stock and the, the movement upward to make 50% of all Boski's money back. Um, but what if that happened offshore and it was a private deal and it just involves stock in a shell corporation that they just move back and forth between each other and it's layered 10 times over who would know this stuff's very complicated when you talk about like algorithmic research or algorithmic um, interpretation from a third-party standpoint it's based off the hard data the these companies get and the, the, the companies release this data from their proprietary software to the public but they can easily manipulate it Google can decide, I want X, Y, and Z to be on you know, the top page of news. I want our news to be first. They can curate like Facebook in Australia, banning all of Australia because they didn't agree with their new content about uh, publishers. You know, Australia's like, you should pay for this content. Facebook's like, I disagree. It's like the, the idea that here is someone else's writing and, and, and work, and we're gonna put it into a feed that says Facebook. We're not really taking responsibility or, or claiming authority or ownership. It's just in the feed and then the, the individual um, articles are available to click on. It's like, well, that's not fair. You're not paying these people for the right to do that. Like, we don't really give a shit. Um, and I think they settled and it's it, towards Facebook's favor. So now Australia's Facebook's back on, but the, the, the ability, the leverage these companies have and it's all from the ruse of this, this, this idea of just sharing information, being friends, sharing pictures, but the market share, the control they have over our lives. We've given them everything that we, ha we know sacred to ourselves to be of value without our actual services or our abilities, which is just the value of us as customers and the wants therein, the things that we like to purchase. We've given it up to them for free by giving them the information, by joining their sites and picking things and clicking things that make deterministic outcomes as to what we want, when we want it, and how much we're willing to pay. That information is valuable. And we just assume, oh, well, I guess, uh, I guess, you know, Facebook just makes money somehow off my pictures. Oh, man, it's, it's, it's creepy stuff. It's really creepy. Uh, and, you know, if we want to, like, get away from, you know, criticizing Twitter but then not doing something about it, we have to do something. We have to create a decentralized... Uh, network, uh, kind of, um, yeah, like a, like a, this, like, I don't know, an open source social media, but no one seems to do. Everyone complains about the Silicon Valley. And I, I don't know that it's because of like government monies, like, like Silicon Valley's financed by the government and then other startups, SpaceX, and you know, these have government contracts as well. They, like uh, SpaceX gets the rockets cheaper, so NASA buy. You know, the, the little things like this, but they, they add up, and it makes you wonder, like, do we really want to met, piss off the U.S. government who used Google as a DOD project, sort of speak, CIA, NSA, to, like, kind of determine what people think? You know, they fund it. Do we want to, like, mess with them? We want to critique Twitter that much. You know, Twitter's gotten government funding. You're going up against the U.S. government, not just Silicon Valley. Um, this, they're, they're intertwined, and I think that's why there's this kind of like hip, hypocritical, you know, like to, to maintain like transparency, to criticize openly, they don't care. But if you try to go up against them, it's hurting your own business and it's very expensive. So Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, uh, Trump, for the sake of clicks and selling kind of like advertising as you're against the censorship is wonderful, but you're not doing anything about it. And you're not doing anything about it because it's, it's a variety of things, as I mentioned, variety of possibilities that are very, very dark and disturbing. 
Um, but you know, uh, you don't need them to do it. You just need to be able to generate market share. Um, can someone create and write code for decentralized open source social media? Um, individual accounts that basically connect without a central hub, like the feeds of everyone are kind of like, you can connect anyone's site through the system, not a blockchain. Because I believe that uh, people's pasts don't define them. You know, blockchains kind of show every um, thing you've ever done. And I kind of don't want my cocaine transactions Kidding. Uh, I don't want my messages from the past that I want deleted or, you know, to show up idiot things. I've said so many dumb things, you have no idea. Mainly faux pas in my speech where I'm not even, I don't even believe that. I used to do a thing where uh, I didn't have money to hire actors. So I would create scenarios where people were forced to be part of something from the sake of my own entertainment. Like at a coffee shop, I'd just stand by someone and uh, see that their friend's coming in and be like, hey, like, oh, hey. And I, neither one of them know me but the person that just came in thinks I'm friends with them. And then uh, the other person uh, next to me thinks I must be friends with that other person. So it, it's, it, and then eventually if they ever find out, they'll accuse, like I'll, I'll go off and do my own thing and eat my muffin and pretend to do work on my computer while I stare at whatever. Um, then they come, hey, who are you? We didn't know you. I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I did that for my, I thought it was funny. Funny for who? I'm like, for me, just for me, because it's, it's like neither one of you realized that I wasn't part of your group. Well, that's kind of like messed up. I'm like, what way? And they're like, it's, it's, it's dishonest. I'm like, but I didn't say anything. I didn't, you just, it's, it's the presumption by my presence. And it was great because it's like, yeah, they have no reason to be critical of me, truly, but like, it is kind of like, what am I doing? Come on. But in, in, and from like a third party perspective, people are like, you know, kind of, and I end up coming off like a jerk. Um, but, but it was fun. I still do it too, because right? it's like an addiction. Um, I don't know, I can't help myself. But yeah, blockchain, you know, not ideal, something else, something. And, and people keep talking about this and doing, it never happens. Uh, I, I think it's just, it's like the, the, the ease of just mainstream social media, like this like, well, I have to get Sarah, who's on Facebook to join this thing, because then in order to talk to her, it's like, it's weird, it's like, I have a cell phone, she has a cell phone. I'm on AT&T, she's on Verizon, it doesn't matter. But in this case, it kind of does. It, it, it's frustrating. Um, oh, I do want to talk about that. I think this is interesting. I, I'm gonna sign up for Starlink, which is um, Elon Musk's uh, satellite-based um, uh, $99 a month, $4.95, I think, to have the wireless network router sent to your house so you can log into the system. Elon and... Um, and Jeff Bezos are fighting. I think Project Juniper is Amazon's uh, competition, but they're not, or uh, Cuniper, Cuper. Uh, they're way behind, and uh, Elon has wanted to, is asked the FCC to drop, if he could drop his satellites into lower orbit, I guess to help speed the process up. They, they made a faux pas, or they need a link, a line of sight where the lower orbit satellite will link to the ones in, you know, further out there. Uh, uh, and in orbit, and uh, Jeff Bezos and a bunch of other comp competitive companies have, have tried to block this. And um, someone for the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, uh, asked, a writer asked for uh, Elon's comment on an article regarding um, that Musk is distracted from running the company because of other commitments. And Musk's comments, this is right in the midst of the SpaceX, Jeff Bezos, uh, Starlink issue. He said, give my regards to your puppet master. Uh, and didn't respond at all. So there seems to be something on going on there. But I, I do love the idea of the subscription service model in terms of just, you know, everything Elon t touches turns to gold. It's brilliant. And, it, and it's another, uh, uh, you know, like disruptor for something very common, which is the, you know, Comcast hold on Comcast ATD major old old stalwarts of um, telecommunications. Um, you know, just it's just another disruptor. He's brilliant. I don't know how he does it. I feel like it's like kind of like a Steve Jobs thing where he's just like, hey, you know what'd be cool if I, I look at my phone and there's a notepad that looks like a real notepad in real life, but it's not. It's on my phone. Figure that out. Because it's just sort of like the the coding thing. I don't think he's doing. I think he's engineering. Kind of like the, the artistic and the like kind of like general framework of things and then kind of 
spinning his wheels in other other areas because like there's no way you can just start from scratch and focus on he's, he's traveling to like spacex to tesla back and forth and then he has all these research projects like that it's like oh, why don't we do that i now have 100 million dollars here you guys go do that i'm going to be busy on these things this is what i want and he has all these people he pays normal amounts of money to then create the idea he's an idea man um albeit with a background in the technical aspects of you know building websites and coding but i don't think he's a guy that knows coding any better than people that are like average today um i'm learning r for statistical uh interpretation mainly for sports betting actually um and it takes time it's practice uh, i got through 30 days so far and it's interesting but uh i have all these like uh, co coefficient, uh, correlation coefficients I want to kind of extrapolate into a computer to see how close they are to, um, to uh, being accurate towards my ends in terms of my ROI um, and, and, and choosing sports bets. I like that. I don't, I don't know. It's weird, but whatever. Uh, it's what I do. One of the things I do. It's fun. Um, Chris Delia's apology. Chris Ilya, uh, if you don't know, he's a comedian, um, has a congratulations podcast. I just think he's actually better than his stand-up, and he's very good at talking to camera and just kind of like chilling, talk, telling stories. He has been MIA since allegations that he's like basically got on like his Instagram account, and um, it's the one where everything disappears, Snapchat, don't do that. Um, and, you know, send girls random things, and some of them might have been underage, and then some of the girls have accused him of... Um, unwanted advances much like the idea of which is very confusing because it's like it's in you can't it's an infallible concept of you asking a girl out or to do something and she doesn't want to do it is an unwanted advance so almost every man in existence except for eunuchs are guilty of this um it's a very fr frustrating thing but he stands by a statement of eight months ago that uh, all his relationships have been legal and consensual um, and he mentioned this and reiterated that yesterday and, a, and a, basically a statement says, uh, I cheated on my wife with other women and I apologize. And I'm kind of like, why is this a topic of conversation that you have to share to the public? Your fans certainly don't care that you cheat. You know, this, your comedy is crude and kind of goofy and funny. You made a mistake. Um, that's not worthy of, of losing tens of millions of dollars in your bookings and your business because of like a personal matter. Why is this a, why is your personal life? It doesn't hurt other people, allegedly. There's, again, there's no, there's no charges. There's no civil suits against him. It's just these strange allegations that come from a very dark, horrible place. And the guy has to apologize publicly because of the Me Too move and the precedent of believe women first. He's been shut down by the gatekeepers, the warlocks. Remember, in Hollywood, talent. You know, uh, there's a great line in... Um, uh, that movie that makes fun of The Room um, with, uh, 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 anyway, it's Judd Apatow basically explained that if, if, if Marlon Brando was alive today, he may not be famous. He may not make it. That's how cutthroat it is. I mean, it's absolutely right. People just pick and choose. Ava Gardner, and you know, there's so many beautiful people. There's so many talented actresses. Like, it, it, there's a process. It's like, to build your way up, there's equity, and then there's someone that might come around that's like, you know, half your age just wins and they chew off. That person, you know, is, is the difference between Leonardo DiCaprio booking a role and Joaquin Phoenix something based on talent? No, it's predilection, it's choices, it's marketing, it's people at high positions that are very, very ugly that shouldn't be near cameras making decisions about who should be. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the deal. And uh, especially with comedians where it comes down to just kind of like uh, intellectual theory on what's funny and like how you relay jokes the barrier entry is incredibly high like who decides who's the next joe rogan podcast or who's the next um uh, george carlin you know like there's an opening there's a spot and then someone says all right let's let's put our money into marketing this person right you can't can't have them all it's nothing to do with talent it's a business they're like they're assets and i think one of the things is there's a politicalized variant of funding in the entertainment world that says listen if you remind people they are here because we chose them the talent so let's get them all in line and some people have been scared you know and, and have gotten their like boots shaken because like you know i i literally did nothing wrong like chris delia and uh they threatened to like take away my livelihood chris delia lives in craig ferguson's house who's on the late late show 
you know, that's, you know, it's a very nice house. So if he was in Malibu or something, he's done very well for himself. He's had multiple Netflix specials and all of it's at risk because someone accused him of something he says isn't true and hasn't been taken to fruition in civil or uh, criminal court. And it sounds like it won't, but imagine like having like for six months that everything you've ever wanted in your entire life is uh, at risk because of a political movement in Hollywood to basically use actors and famous people as props for a political association of progressive blah, 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 and, and social terraforming in society. It's like kind of like what you do. It's like, oh, your acting and your, your stage work is just a mechanism for you to gain market share to do what we tell you to do. And to prove it, and to make sure you're, you're on ball or you're on point, or to further emphasize this in society in general, we're gonna take certain people in Hollywood and just throw them under the bus and say, hey, that's a toxic masculinity. We don't like, we wanna get rid of that. So let's use you as an example when you slept with this 19 year old girl uh, as someone that's awful and that, that, that's unex inexcusable. And that's kind of what's happening. Um, and he didn't really know why he was, you could just tell the guy who speaks for a living didn't know what he was apologizing for. He was like, oh, hey guys, it's, it's been a long time and um, oh, it's really early today. Uh, oh, I, Sometimes in the morning, wake up, coffee, huh? And, that, and then like later on, he's like, um, uh, I just want to say um, I, I'm sorry for what do I, what do I say? for 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 sleeping with women consensually. Is that, is that right? That's what I'm saying. Okay. It doesn't sound good. It sounds weird. And it sounded like he didn't really, it's, it's fake. You know, it's like when you pretend that you're like confused and you speak for a living, the whole thing sounds fake. Not what he's saying that he doesn't believe it. It's forced, it's clearly forced. Someone like threatened, this is what you do. And it's weird. It's like, I don't think this was his decision to go on today. I think he got approval, you know? I don't, it's... And then someone says, all right, his sponsors can start paying him again. and. And Cash Hat makes a decision, and then they know from the allegations they're not real, and they're like, all right, going forward, he's not a liability. And that's kind of the way it works. Now he's back on. I think he was with, um, he's starting to do comedy shows. I mean, it's just, it all happens. He's just like, you're safe. You're no longer, um, you're no longer threatened. And give me the, God, I would be sweating through my shirt. The kind of amount of money that he makes, and then it's like all of a sudden, boom, you might be a victim. In this circumstance, it might not even have been sleeping with an underage girl. Just someone on Instagram that's underage even lied about it. That response to him and this very attractive woman says she's 17 years old, 17 year old versus a 24 year old woman. You know, it's hard to tell. They just say, I think you're really great and gorgeous. And he flirts with them. And just by the allegation of him talking in a sexual way with an underage girl, that could have destroyed his career without even sleeping with the girl. And he did cheat, and he says he has a sex sex problem, um, which I thought I, I mentioned which, uh, a video the other day. And like, would it, it would be funny if like every person that's a sex addict in Hollywood says a giant schlong like David Duchovny, and that they they have this gift, but there's a quota. Each year they have to sleep with more women than the last year. If they don't, they lose an inch, and this is biological. I'm like, I would too, of course. That makes sense. You got to go for it. Um, but yeah, it's a personal matter. He didn't hurt anyone. He hurt his family. He hurt people closest to him. Um, it's not. A, it's not a toxic masculinity thing. It's just men are jerks. Uh, the the pre the funny thing about Hollywood and like the kind of the destruction of family values and the precept of uh, of monogamy, which for example in the gay community, um, many gay Hollywood executives and stuff like this have this kind of like duality of I have a boyfriend and I sleep with other men and it's okay and acceptable. The idea that this guy's career is almost ruined based on promiscuity, it's weird. Um, but it goes back to the original allegations, which is very serious, but they're just not true. It's, and, and, and at least at the moment, they, they haven't come, you know, and he doesn't even worry about it, and it seems like people are allowing him to go back on stage. And this is what it is. Um, and it sounds like, for, in terms of like monetary damages, um, it sounds like his people that protect him don't think he's a liability and uh, you know but it, it does go to show you it, it really does start transforming 
because young people take this at face value, like, you know, you can't treat women like this, you know, you're being, being like a very arrogant, whatever, it's, it's not good, you have to just say, is it okay if I touch you? And like, what woman wants that? It's like, it's okay, like that. Uh, Catherine Deneuve said during the height of the Me Too movement, I want men to be men. Um, which is quite apropos, I think we should, we're not the same. Uh, the idea that when Jordan Peterson talks about, do you want to be in a society where your job the, 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 your, isn't competitive? Where you don't take on, or, or this, is, this, is, this is the juxtaposition, I mean, the most important thing. You can say and try to say that you know, the world's a patriarchy and whatever, and uh, the reason, you know, it's unfair and uh, it has to change. And women, men are abusive and are, you can try to say that. Right, it's like that, it, that sexist. But competence comes into play. You can't just start knocking down powerful people based off of the idea that it's, they got that position unfairly based on their, sec, their, on their sex. Because then you have to take their shoes, take their position, and then do as well as they did. And that comes to the underlying like, joke of all of this, which is that it's not about um, sexism. The people that are in power are using the Me Too movement, funding it, white, rich people, to make sure that people don't rise up against them. They're trying to maintain the status quo and keep the barrier to entry high uh, amongst this rupture. So there's another fraud or, you know, re French Revolution. You know, th th this is the idea. It's like they we're controlling the revolution. Um, and kind of the calling of male dynamics and like the workplace, for example, of competitive, you know, aggressive nature, it's perfect because that's what gets you ahead in life and say that that's, oh, it's not necessary anymore. Play video games and just kind of chill and you know, more estrogen. That's, that's a good way of people in power maintaining it, absolutely. Um, and, and, and it's kind of a joke uh, to kind of conform society to demographics uh, because then competence becomes an issue and things start to fall apart. To, well, I'm gonna put a woman here, where did she go to school? Uh, she went to, you know, she dropped out of you know, Santa Cruz Community College with this guy, a Harvard Medical. Nah, Democrat. Let's get the girl from Santa Cruz. I'm just saying, like that's the thing. Like, or any anything. Like these sort of weird, like, uh, you know, society is. It's take every accomplishment you've ever had and based off like the way you look or like your sex is. It's kind of just a big propagandic pro, 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 joke. It's a joke. It's it's a complete joke. Um, but I hope Chris gets back to like. You know, normal stuff and good time. I gotta get people on the show to talk to. Talking to camera, oh my god, it gets like, it's, it's weird. It's like, I don't want to talk to someone. I'm so much better that way. Make it happen. Um, oh yeah. Uh, and another Alexander Wang, um, gay fashion designer, uh, has been accused of sexual assault by multiple people. Uh, one after another came out. Uh, interesting. Um, and you know, that's the thing. It's it's, it's, it's a. It, it seems like the most powerful weapon we have in society is this precept of sexual assault. Like if you're famous, you were sleeping with random women and stuff like that, and now it's gonna all come back to, on you. Someone says something, and they might do it for all for money. But the idea that everyone can, can be controlled, every human really, gay, straight, male, female, but female women get away with it. But it's really been to attack men, can be attacked and destroyed by this idea of sex, of just sleeping with women casually, or sleeping with men casually, it, it, it's like Kevin Spacey. Like, it's just, it's, it's a demonstratively destructive, self-fulfilling prophecy of just absolute destruction. And it, and it seems like it can be used as a weapon, justified by having random people use it whenever they want. And then, um, uh, which justifies it as being legitimate, and then used as a weapon again because it's already you know in the detriment in, in the everyday conversation, um, and it can change the way we kind of like as people deal with each other. We're already like as strange as it is with the pandemic, but like it's I don't know man. Like I don't use Tinder. I don't have this like separation. Now I, I I would you know I definitely don't use Tinder, but um, it seems like there's this. People are becoming further and further disconnected from like just how we are biologically and like what are what we want and like it seems like there's 
this sense of shame you're, people are trying to put on other people. Like your wants and desires are selfish or wrong or um, are hurtful. Your independent thoughts, your individualistic ideas are, are, are evil. That you should not speak them. You should redefine and uh, train yourself to do things in this particular way because this is the right way. This is the this is like an evolved way, and I, I think it's a, it's dangerous and delusionary. Um, but I'm not sure that enough people are doing anything about it because it's kind of like a it's kind of meant for the masses to control and people in power are kind of like this is a sociological you know warfare uh, like a uh, like a new new you know warfare that we haven't seen before using social media and the internet and um controlling people um and it doesn't really apply to the people in power that don't like it they're like mm, this is you know i'm gonna go to cabo right now get on my plane while everyone's freezing in austin and at the same time put a video there saying they wear your mask and stay at home like the people that think that's awful they also fly in private planes and stuff like that they're you like know, this isn't this isn't it's so in terms of societal like effect, this is awful. But like, I have a really nice life. I know this is just manipulation by very powerful people. I don't want to fight it. Why? There's no money in it. You're going up against people that already have market share. To disrupt that, especially with the like the, the economy and the, the diversity of that market share, it's not necessarily profitable necessarily. Um, but we'll see. I, I hope it is. I hope someone believes that in the future and uh, we can get out of this kind of like bullshit of like hypocritical criticism uh, like this hey, this isn't the way life should be someone should do something about it great do it someone should famous should join parlor and say I'm dropping Twitter really famous like Brad Pitt or Cristiano Ronaldo or something something like, you have something like that right you know it's beyond this US politics but I don't think it'll happen necessarily so when you're risking money that's the problem. Or you're giving up your, your reach. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe you do both. And you just, you just say, hey, I'm, I want my followers in both. And I've joined Parler because I want to reach conservatives. And I don't think that their views are necessarily bad. Uh, I just uh, want to make sure that I, you know, could reach everyone that I, that I want. And then people attack and say, oh, he just cares about money. Like, you know, the progressives will be like that. Silicon Valley might be like that. But it's like... Yeah, that's, that's what it's about. It's what it's about for you guys too. Money and power. Hello? All right. Um, yeah, please sign up for my Patreon. Uh, the the, uh, the Optimimas are for you. Lovely. Go for it. Um, I will sign them, send them to you. And uh, also, what else? Uh, click the like button below and uh, have a lovely week. And I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.